Hello, good morning. Well, I wanted to make a quick video because I just um, I just finished a Bible study, uh, a Bible study regarding Romans chapter 14, verse 13 to 23, and that has to do with not judging people or not being judgmental uh, towards others, and you know, waiting in, waiting in um, not to offend people and just being wise on the way that we relate to each other. But someone had a question about, um, this lady had a question about a friend of hers or someone she knows at work that had a problem with Christians drinking alcohol and uh, drinking at all, not a little bit, not socially or getting drunk, drink it at all. So uh, some of the people stayed behind after the Bible study to give her, you know, just feedback on how to, how should um, she respond because it seems like it's become a problem where she gives a, a hard time to anybody and everybody, a, anyone that is a Christian about the drinking. And, you know, I did not put my two cents in my opinion, but I decided to just make a quick video and say what, how I feel about that because uh, the Bible doesn't prohibit drinking. What it prohibits is drunkenness and just like it doesn't prohibit having an opinion. What it prohibits is you gossiping and destroying somebody's reputation. The Bible doesn't restrict having sex. What it restricts is being fornication, which is sex outside marriage, and also, once you marry, adultery. You see, having sex with somebody who's not your partner. And uh, the Bible doesn't... Um, uh, restrict a whole lot of things. I mean, most actually in the, for the New Testament, because the Old Testament, of course, there were endless laws and regulations over 600 plus, uh, based on the book of Deuteronomy and Leviticus and all of that stuff. And but in the New Testament, the Master said that all the law and the prophets have. It comes down to uh, about about the bottom line is love. The Lord, with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. That encompasses all the law and all the prophets. So, of course, you have to go learn, you know, the way of the gospel. It will teach us how to, how to deal with certain things in life. But pretty much everything filters through that aspect of love. So... I didn't say this to this lady, but unfortunately, when people have really, really, really strong beliefs on certain areas and they are movable, you know, it has to do with their own philosophy in life. Something happened to her, perhaps, or she witnessed something, or at some point she became to believe that all drinking was sinful, no matter what, especially Christians, you know, should not drink and maybe has to do with her testimony or something that she feels is a bad testimony for others, but yet ultimately has to do with her perception and her judgment about drinking itself, you know. Maybe she was free from alcoholism. Maybe her father was, uh, maybe she grew up in an environment, uh, in an alcoholic environment. Maybe someone died because alcohol in her life that she chose to make this stern position about no you don't drink period or it could have been just poor teaching maybe she's sitting under a ministry or pastor or somebody who straight up gave her that core bomb to carry throughout her life and i'm telling you something i've learned is that you know when you love Jesus, you're growing in the Lord, you have to, you have to, at some point, you know, you have to learn to separate church culture from truth in the gospel, you know, and don't let the two mangle up because next thing you're going to be preaching culture and church, um, um, I forgot what the verse say that Jesus said that, you know, you teaching customs as doctrine and you, and that that confuses people. That's a downfall. They lose the truth of the gospel when you do that. 
But anyway, uh, it is a core value and it's going to take a whole lot more than just explaining to this lady and showing her scripture that her stand on drinking and all drinking being sinful is incorrect. It's not that she's going to hell for it. No, but that's a weight that she shouldn't carry. That's a weight nobody should carry. That's a lot. Um, and I, I think that she may benefit from some Christian counseling, you know, and unpacking, okay, where, how did you pick up this core, this stone in your life, and why are you choosing to maintain it as a core belief? You know, it's just like, Abortion, that is a core, whether you agree with it or you do not agree with it, that is a core, strong uh, value and belief. And it's not something that you can explain away simply. Okay, it takes a whole lot more than that. You have to go back and unpack things on people's lives. And, uh, and then ultimately, it's still their choice. It's still whether they want to continue or not. So you have to count your, if you want to be friends with someone, you might have to just count your losses, agree to disagree or some way. But they ultimately go back to what Jesus says, love. Ultimately, is love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, which is absolutely impossible outside Christ Jesus. You have to be in Christ Jesus, receive his righteousness and his, um, his um, wisdom and holiness and all of that stuff. So you are in him and that way you make the declaration, you know, that you belong to God. And, and then you have to love people. You have to love people. So you have to at all costs avoid being on odds and strife with folk. Even people who don't care whether you forgive them or not, forgive them anyway. Even people who have dealt you blows, deadly blows, deadly blows. When I say deadly, I'm talking about they hurt your child. Adultery. I mean, just things that really can hurt your faith in, as a person. You have to find a place of uh, forgiveness. You have to let them go. You have to get to the point that you can pray for these people. Pray for them like you pray for your own children. You have to do that. You have to do that. That's a non-negotiable. Okay? Amen. Glory to God. See you later.